Hi Lisa. Uh, yeah, so I can't remember what happened last time. We did some stuff underground, then we seemed to did some stuff overground, then we did some more stuff underground. Uh, and then we emerged from what I can only describe as a stinky hole and um, have ended up in this abandoned valley. Which is, I believe, where Gordon Freeman is going to have to make a life for himself unless he can find a way out. But here's the- I'm a regular Womble, excuse me? Oh, because of the hole, I guess? <laughs> I thought the Wombles lived in quite a nice hole, not a stinky one. Anyway, I've made a fascinating discovery while I was dicking about in this area earlier, which is that for all that this appears like natural rock formations, that's made of steel. This is all painted steel. Is the entire thing an illusion? Is George... George? <laughs> is George Freeman's life a lie? Or is this perhaps some kind of incredible, astonishing gaslighting experience that he's experiencing as people try to convince him that he is in fact in New Mexico or Arizona or wherever the fuck the Black Mesa science facility is located. But he's actually somewhere far away. Also, five points to me for my skillful rodeoing of the uh, head crabs there. I wonder if there's anything underwater. Ooh, pipes. More horrible smelly holes, I guess, for me to crawl inside at some point in this narrative. Warning, do not close outlet without closing intake. Well, let's see what happens, huh? Shall we, shall we experiment with things? Or is that the intake? Or is that the outlet? I don't know. These instructions should really be- oh. Ow. Maybe I should have been a bit faster. Well, it's nice to see- wow, this soundscape sucks ass, huh? Feels like I'm visiting Silent Hill. Hey, it's a guy. It's a guy and he's got a gun. Can I have a gun? Hey guy, can I- where the fuck are you going? It's almost like he couldn't hear me. It's almost like I'm talking to myself. Incidentally, I assume you guys can hear me and uh, that all of the audio is fine and not terrible. Oh, those look all like organic chunks. Which I believe is the only breakfast cereal available in the cafeteria here. He dropped his bullets. Sir, you forgot your bullet. Oh. Well, that sucks for him, but it's... Gun, on the other hand. Can I? Can I gun? Can I grab that? <gasps> gun. And like everybody who obtains a firearm, my immediate thought is to turn to murder and kill these horrible things that never did any harm to me. But, um, that's just the natural reaction, really. Now, if I run and jump, can I get over here? Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, that's... That sure is poison. Although, it looks like my suit is actually doing enough. Oh, you have to crouch underwater to get in here, okay. I didn't know underwater crouching was a thing. I'm going to run out of suit protection if I'm not careful. Looks like I needed more soup protection. Ha ha ha! Soup. The blade itself incites to murder is a really raw quote, and I don't know where it's from because I am not as sufficiently educated to be doing the profession I have chosen. This sure seems like I need to hop across these. Or fall down. Falling down's an option too. Let's see what's over here. I bet this leads back to the room we've already been in. With a locked door. Can I sneak back through the pipe? This is, of course, the Black Mesa Super Production Facility, which is a very popular side venture. Not a lot of people know this. It's it's not really expanded on in the games, but it's uh, in the you know the popular series of novels, Half Life, Gordon, Gaiden. It's um, expanded on a fair bit. That actually Black Mesa is not very profitable as a research facility because of all of the terrible disasters and the lowest common denominator creations. You know, nobody nobody pays enough to actually build any of this stuff, so all the make stuff they make is garbage. Which is why they are actually they have actually secured many extremely lucrative government contracts with the American government to provide food for, you know, the, the cafeterias in, in government facility buildings. Uh, which is why the food in American cafeterias is also fucking terrible. Or so I'm told. I've, uh, I've never been there, so I wouldn't know. All of this is facetious, by the way, as I don't even know if there was a, a Half-Life novel series. I wouldn't be surprised if there, were, if there was at one point, but 
There's so much supplementary material to these games that gets revealed by developers, but that just is not actually present in the text itself. It's really easy and fun to lie about things, who knew? It's one of my favourite hobbies, actually, much to my flatmate's frustration. There's nothing more joyful to me than telling someone something that sounds like a fun fact, but that is kind of vaguely convincing. Honestly, these things were easier to kill with the... Hammer's not the right word, but the, the, the whacking stick, the, the, the bloodstained smacking rod that I use. Well, you see, that's one of the advantages to being me. I am sufficiently autistic that I can simply sound like I am telling the truth, regardless of what I am saying, or, alternatively, always sound sarcastic, which have the net uh, same benefit of people never actually being sure whether I'm being sincere, which is extremely frustrating when you have to console someone about something terrible that's happened in their life. But, of course, when I say autistic, what I actually mean is that I am a robot. Which is still not really something I'm committing to as a bit. But you know what? Maybe maybe not committing to the bit can be my bit. Have you considered that? Checkmate, atheists. Anyway, I was joking about the, uh, the, get the novel series, but this is definitely the soup-making facility. This is where Black Mesa makes all of its various soups. That was slippery. I do actually wonder what this is for. This kind of brings back around to some stuff I've said on previous streams about how Half-Life is sitting at the sort of exact in interstice... Interstice? Inter interstice? In the exact middle bit between games going from these designs where they're supposed to sort of look like spaces that are... Well, the spaces that are designed based around being a fun combat arena to eventually becoming spaces that are designed to look like real spaces and feel like real spaces. And Half-Life was a big part of the influence behind that change, but it was also one of the big... What if... But it also has this really weird energy all of its own as it attempts to have these spaces that make... that are supposed to feel vaguely industrially, um, to an extent that's a little bit more than a lot of other contemporary FPSs, but that don't make any sense as physical spaces if you think about them for even more than a moment. Ah yes, this is our nuclear runoff uh, processing facility where we, where we stir it all up real good and compress it down endlessly in containers that have no entry and excess uh, entry and exit pipes for the for the fluids to get in and out. It's um it's all kind of a mystery. Oh, shortcut. I love to open shortcuts. You can always tell a gamer who has been obsessed with Dark Souls at some point in their career because just you gotta love them. You gotta love the shortcuts. More than anything else, this reminds me of um, children's carnival rides. The slow ones that aren't really fun and exciting, but that are still designed like thrill ri Oh, fuck. But that are still designed like thrill rides and just kind of... I, I can just go on the edge. I bet I can just go on the edge. Yeah, why have I not just done that? Oh, it's really slippery, that's why. <laughs> Maybe this is lubricant. Maybe this is... Maybe they manufacture their own machine lubricant here. This... This this is slower, but it feels more consistent. <laughs> so, um, having covered himself in a large quantity of bright green lube, it is now time for him to crawl inside another pipe. Maybe that's why it's here. It's literally just here so that you can get all slippy before you climb inside this um, brown tube. See if I can get on it without falling in the, the slime. Ah, yes, fantastic. They'll never catch me. I'm like a greased eel down these pipes. I am I am starting to feel a little bit naked without a bigger gun. I would... Oh, of course, this is part of the meat pipes. Those famous Black Mesa meat vents. Naturally, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? I assume that the real reason why there's just meat coming out of, like, events and things constantly is because Black Mesa is currently undergoing this bizarre teleportation situation, and therefore all of these bits and bobs are 
things that have teleported into places they shouldn't be and are now being ground up uh, by machines they're not supposed to be in. But have you considered that the alien creatures all have... Uh, uh, oh, I'm fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But the alien creatures all have green blood and like weird, slimy, green, brown, beige coloured innards. Which is not the colour of all the stuff that's flying out here. So clearly this stuff's supposed to be here. It's not just ended up in here by accident as part of one of the terrible disasters teleporting things into inconvenient places where they'll gum up the works eventually. Is there anything else in here? Oh, this, this seems nasty. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure Gordon Freeman is going to have to hepatitis when this is all over. Like, how many... How many open wounds does he have at this point? And exactly how many of these suspicious, clearly filthy pools of water is he going to go swimming in? Like, a band-aid will not save you from um, blood poisoning. Let's have a look-see and not get ground up into tiny little pieces like whoever the fuck it is keeps being squirted out of the vents at me. Ow. Maybe I should be under the water in the fiery place. Does that go anywhere? I bet that I, I bet that's just going to kill me. I don't want to be immediately murdered. It's still really funny to me that you can crouch underwater. Like I don't know how long you spent you've spent swimming in your life, but crouching underwater isn't really a thing. Very damp crouching. Aha! A shortcut. The thing is, I'm not sure why you can open these shortcuts, since they, generally speaking, don't help. The reason why the shortcuts are such an interesting mechanical innovation in Dark Souls is because you constantly respawn at bonfires. When you die, your story is not over. You continue on and can head back to where you were. Oh, hello. Which means, of course, that um, opening a shortcut is actually an important and meaningful step on your journey. Well, okay, well, he's gonna get bad pneumonia then. Like, the bad pneumonia, the awful pneumonia. Can I turn this on and off? No, only off. Interesting. Might be a bit more difficult to traverse than I expected then. Oh. This one hasn't seen me. Do you know what? I think this might be my magnum opus. Ah, yeah. I mean, I've done better murders today, but, um, fuck it, let's go with that. Conveyor control. Can I turn them off? I cannot see a meaningful difference. Does it reverse direction? Oh, it does. Does it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's the direction I want to go, so that's what we should have it switched to, I suppose. I'm going to have to switch back to this again. Ugh. On the other hand, maybe this is what Gordon is trained for. Maybe this is what he's been doing the entire time. He's clearly only one of, like, three HEV suit trained personnel in the entire facility, so maybe his job is just, like, Gordon, fantastic. You've got a degree in, in, in crawling through filthy, slimy vents and, um, and stuff. So naturally you've built up an immunity to all kinds of horrible engine grease and bits of rotting dude and rusty metal. Because it looks like they don't do any goddamn maintenance in here, basically, ever. Maybe the shortcuts are in case you fall the fuck down there. Oh, look, more bits. Okay, this is starting to look intentional. <laughs> I'm going to call it here. These are definitely components of the meat vent system. Because that's definitely intentionally putting meat bits on a conveyor belt. Oh, I don't want to get... I don't want to get squished. Shit. <laughs> well, it had to happen sooner or later. Dodge. 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 Successful. Alright, let's see if we can time it correctly this time and not die horribly. Yay! And another one. And... We're clear. Fantastic. It's infectious. Okay, it's infectious waste, right? So this is a waste processing facility for infectious waste, and they're all just open containers that I can do this in if I want to, you know? Have a big old sippy sippy. Ah, dicks. Uh, 
Like, it says infectious waste, and those are definitely- that's a human spine. I've seen spines enough to know that's a human spine. Like, these are guy bits. Like, like, these are dude viscera. Oops. Okay, there we go. Let's have a quick save. And try and drop onto the correct thingamajig. Also, that looks like an oven. I don't want to, I do not wish to go into the oven today, please. Can I? There's no- there's no way this is gonna work. No, it didn't work. <laughs> Surprising no one, least of all me. I bet I can take shortcuts down there. I bet I can drop onto something useful, like there, for instance. Let's just hurry through it so we don't get cooked. Maybe it's like infrared. Is there anything in this one? Why? It's just more avoidable infections. Oh, hey, I survived. For a given value of survival. <laughs> you stuck. Stupid. I'm so much smarter than a head crab. I'm really I'm really pleased that I, a theoretical physicist with a degree in theoretical physics and an, a big old huge brain, um somehow cleverer than a creature that doesn't really know how not to die when I hit it with things. Which I guess could be tr said to be true of almost everything. Let's have a look, see what's upstairs. I bet it's going to lead me back around to that door I already found. See, that one, that one's useful. That is actually a useful shortcut. Possibly the first we've found so far. I just feel so sure that there must be secrets hidden around here somewhere, and I really want to find them. This is gonna take forever. You can't sprint when you're crouching. I don't think I can... No, that thing actually moved faster than I do. That sucks. Maybe there'll be some kind of shrink button later and I can shrink down. Because this is video games, and the realm of the imagination will allow you to do whatever you wish. Whenever you wish. Ah! Or you can just fall to your death again. That's also an option. If you do that a few times, you do actually die. Which is probably the... Fuck. Probably the least intelligent thing I've ever said about a video game. <laughs> If you want to die, try tearing yourself off a high surface. This will facilitate the matter. Oh, so I'm also running out of bullets again. They clearly want to do a kind of a whole survivally horrory bit in this sequence, where you're supposed to be carefully conserving your limited amount of ammunition. But you know what? Fuck it, I'm just gonna shoot everything. When all you have is a handgun, everything starts to look like a bullet. That doesn't make sense. Come with me, and you'll see. I, I cannot remember how that song goes. I, I've actually only ever seen that movie once. It's supposed to be such a cult classic. But all I really remember is... Gene, Gene Simmons? Gene, not Gene Simmons, Gene Wilder. Fuck's sake. Uh, losing his absolute shit and behaving like a madman. Which is kind of what he does in all of his roles, but... There's something so twinkly-eyed about it in that one that I think it works extra well. Ouch! Ooh, I got all toasty. Lovely. I knew- <laughs> After I went through one of these red things and it wasn't an oven, I got kind of overconfident about whether or not it would be an oven. These are definitely more guy bits, although that looks like it could be alien. Oh! That looks like it's going to be a problem later. I'll have to remember to keep an eye out for landmines, which somehow someone has placed in the interminable grindy hallways of this inexplicable system. Oh, does it go on a loop? Am I back where I started? I am. Okay, that's bizarre. Who designed this? What is its purpose? And that is kind of the iconic thing you find yourself shouting when you're playing this kind of game. Who did design this? What the fuck is it for? What's the point of it? Is there something in here? Another questions. It's honestly the same philosophical questions that humans have been asking themselves for their entire existences. Why am I here? What is my point? Do I exist solely to dispose of bits of people?
And um, ultimately, yes, you are only here to dispose of bits of people, Gordon Freeman. You are the one human created to be the greatest warrior of all time. Congratulations, you wasted your time learning theoretical physics. What you should have been learning was um, theoretical ballistics. Which isn't a thing, except that I just made it up. Oh hey, I didn't die. Alright, me and my one hit point are going to go and try and avoid being exploded. Ah, dips. Well, I guess I avoided being exploded. Oh, what? That was close. But we're fine. It's all fine. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all nice and fine here. Now, if I can just line this up properly, I will not die. Which is the important thing, really. I don't know if you've ever played video games. I'm actually really good at them. And one of the most important things I ever learned while playing a game. How the fuck am I supposed to not die here? If I shoot that, it's going to kill me, right? I, I haven't seen a mobile crate that I could drop on here. How am I supposed to... Oh, I, I think I figured it out, actually. <laughs> is there a load... There's a save zone here. Oh, God, this is bad. I might be softlocked now. This, this travelator is too fast for me to get across it. And it definitely spawned me in right next to this explosion that's going to kill me. Because what I was just thinking was, if I put this on the conveyor belt, I can let it wait to go around the corner and then use it to detonate the thing. What was if I go really fast? Nope, that doesn't work either. Uh, ah, okay. So you can backtrack on this elevator, this travelator specifically. Conveyor belt, that's what they're called. You just can't do it on... You just can't do it where it uh, splits, I guess. Okay, that's inconvenient. Is that, am I close enough that that's going to hurt me? Well, I've wasted these. I think that worked. Let's find out. I'm a genius. Oh, yeah. Using the tools that they gave me for the express purpose of solving the puzzle, I have solved the puzzle. I love being smart. Oh, hey. What did that say? High, high, high reading area? High, high rating area? This must be where they assess me. Oh, now that doesn't look fun. I don't want to go down. <laughs> I don't want to go down here. This seems actively detrimental to my health. Uh is there a way to do that without taking damage? Because that doesn't seem likely. Well, he got splattered. Oh, we can't talk about mastication. This is a children's show. Oh, that looks radioactive as hell. Okay. Me and my five hit points are going to try and avoid being completely having all of our ions denatured. You don't denature an ion. It denature a protein. I don't know what you do to ions. I suppose you deionize them. I say, as some kind of questionable ethics. Oh, are they only realizing that now? Ah, oh, come on. I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide behind this crate. That's gonna. Yep, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the end for me. You know what? I think the questionable ethics here are. I think it's questionable ethics to have a room full of these dipshits. Can I get on top of this? Oh, they don't hurt each other. Interesting. Okay. Good for them. Not ideal for me. Oh, of course, you're right. That is my rating. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take questionable ethics out of ten. I'm going to have to kill three of these with this really quick. Like some kind of John Woo gun genius. Oh, I've got more ammo. Ammo. Ammo munition. Ammunition. I've got more ammo munitions. There we go. I made it in the end. I was wondering if that one would be chill, but no. <laughs> it's been a while since I had a friend. Since I had one of these that was friendly. Ow, fuck. Who electrified this fence? Oh, this is the questionable ethics. 
Oh, hello. Welcome to the stream. I don't think you've been, I don't think you've been around for any of them recently. So always lovely to see you. We made it like halfway through the game so far, I think. I've got about three hit points and I need to try and hop over a fence, which is a very human problem to be suffering in all honesty. Actually, can I, if I shoot that, will that work? With my one remaining, <laughs> my one remaining bullet, am I going to waste it on this? You betcha. Well, I did something. I can't believe that worked. I cannot believe that worked. Like, with all of the times I've talked about the way that... Actually, shit, I haven't. So, on my uh, current Let's Play on my YouTube channel, which anyone who's watching who doesn't already should go check out, um, I, re I talked recently about this interesting concept that games have. Unlike most other forms of media, games have to teach you how to consume them, because every game is a simulation, and every simulation game has different parameters. If a game doesn't tell you what you are able to do in the game, then essentially you are never able to progress, because you don't know what you can and can't do. You good? Like, I don't know about you, but I just- fuck. Well, I was going to say I would feel personally more comfortable if he would remain in the tube, but I, he clearly disagrees. This ugly man is shooting bees at me. This cannot stand. Oh, I guess he could dish it out, but he couldn't take it. Hmm. I could really use some more bullets. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there is this interesting issue that games run into where if they don't teach you what you can do, you often get stuck. And I've always felt that FPSs either succeed very well on this aspect or they fail utterly. There's been a lot of um, FPS games I've played that make it very clear to you what they teach you as you play. And this is unintentional. This is just a fundamental aspect of, of game playing. As you play the game, you, without even realising it, learn what you can and can't do. And the game often... Designers often don't even realise what they are teaching the game players. This looks like it's gonna... I mean, yeah, that, pretty much. So... Shit. Would you, would you motherfuckers leave me alone for five minutes? I'm trying to do science. Uh, what was I saying? I was saying that the uh, the problem that you often run into is that they will ver they will teach you very strict parameters for the way the game world is set up. If you play a game for five hours and at no point in those five hours have you been able to open a door, hey, it's if no good up there. It's all sealed off. The only way out would be to find someone with scanner access who can open the front door. I'm pretty sure there's a few scientists hiding somewhere in the labs. Maybe with both of us looking, we can track them down and get them to let us out. It's funny you should say that. See, I've been I've been doing a lot today. I've killed a lot of guys. I've killed a lot of uh, military soldier guys. And you know what? Those military soldier guys always tried to shoot me on sight. And you know what? They tried to shoot the other guys who look like you on sight. So I find it interesting. I find it interesting that at the end of this locked corridor that you had no way of opening... That there was a soldier guy. That soldier guy must have come past you. By definition, that man could not have been in that space if he hadn't come past you. Did you let him past? Is that what you're... Don't, don't you turn your back on me. Are you on their side? Is that what's happening here? Yeah, let's go. I'm only not going to murder him because I think he'll be useful to stand in front of bullets. But oh, I don't trust him. He's not on my side. Speaking of... um being on people's sides. If I can just sneak up behind them. Fuck. Okay, well, he's at least willing to put in the effort of putting a few bullets in these guys, which probably means he is on my side, regardless of my- oh. Regardless of my justified suspicion. Have I only got grenades left? Don't- Jesus Christ. Well, I take it back. He was a hero. An unfairly maligned hero that I should have trusted from minute one. Let's see. Who the hell are these guys shooting at? I'm the only threat. By, sh by shooting directly at another person, you are implying that I am less of a threat than they are. And that's not acceptable at this stage of the day. 
Gordon's lovely little postal spree has been going on long enough that we know that he would not accept that. He is absolutely in the market for shooting a bunch more guys. He did kind of die fast. I don't know if he maybe got um, clipped by some of my grenade explosions, but he was shot with machine guns by three men at once while wearing nothing but a bulletproof vest, so it's kind of understandable that he died. Like, I'm not going to consider it a personal character weakness if someone dies when they are shot at with machine guns. Well, I say machine guns, that's like an MP4 or something. It's not exactly a machine gun, it's a sub-machine gun, as they say. That's locked too. Anyway, so... Games do need to teach you how to play them. And very often when I've been playing an FPS, I'll get into a situ- what are you doing? Shit! Get into these situations where I can't figure out how I'm supposed to get through a room and it's because I've played 10 hours of this game and on hour 10 that's when they decide to put a door that you can open and you're just expected to know that you can open it. A lot of modern games- yeah of course I meant MP5, you know. I, I remember what guns are, but the fascinating thing about me is that I actually have this weird problem with my brain where I forget what nouns are, straight up. It infuriates my girlfriend to no end because I will ask her for the, the thing that is the thing, and I will replace two other random words to try and describe what the object is, which is not especially helpful. And this then results in um, much confusion. Oh, of course, MP4 is the file type. So, yeah. One of the things that interests me is the way that um, Half-Life is at this interstitial point. Because other, other FPSs make these mistakes. Or, to avoid making the mistake, what they do is that they have, you know, for the first time, you know, eight hours into a game, suddenly you get a little pop-up on the screen that says, Make sure to put the CD in the CD drive to remove the boss's shield before the final combat. Are they not going to come over here? Hey! Hey, come here! Oh, is this- this has got glass in. Straight up, this whole time I thought there was no protective element in here. Are they just stuck in the- ow, fuck! This is cheating. This is literally- they're cheating at the video game. And then um, the interesting thing about an immersive sim and the games inspired by the design parameters that began in immersive sims is that you instead get these uh, general understandings that anything you think you should be able to do, you can probably do. Um, and you also get clear iconography. So you know that you can interact with these elements because they have white paint on them or whatever you start to recognise and learn that these are the interactable elements and game designers... Is that a weapon or is that something I can... that will hurt me? Ooh! <gasps> squigs! Is that what they're called? Wait, no, Squigs is from Warhammer. What the fuck are these things? Squoodles? Squumps? They got... they look like they have that kind of name. Squawps? Jiggly Wigglies? Old Jimmy make fall downs? Oh, they're brutal. I think Jimmy making fall downs is definitely what I'm going to go with. <laughs> Good job, Jimmy. You made him fall down. Let's switch to the old shotgun. Classic, absolute favourite. That looks like a room I don't want to go in just yet. Snarks, thank you. Aha! Uh -huh. I've been here before. You know, it's a really good uh, security design paradigm that these guys came up with. Did I say it right that time? Because people have been making fun of me all week for saying paradigm wrong. Anyway, um, it's a, it's a really clever uh, security system that it lets people out but not in. But once they've gone out, they can come back in any time they like. Saves on having to remember to carry key cards and sign into things, you know. It's just more convenient for everybody, except anybody who wants to... Ah, uh, okay, that... Shit, that may have been more of a problem for me than I thought. Wow, he just disappeared. 
Were these guys also in containment cylinders? I'm pretty sure these guys were- shit, is that a grenade? Ow. You would not believe how severe Gordon Freeman's tinnitus is by this point. Just a, just a generally a dog shit day for him, frankly. Is this another short card? Those look like they're going to explode. Let's not stand next to them. Wow, what do they make these guys out, out of these days? Good lord. <gasps> the grinder room. I remember this from playing this many years ago. It's actually... Uh, I know it looks kind of curious, but it's it's actually designed as the nerve center for one of Black Mesa's other very lucrative projects, which is an attempt to corner the um, online gay dating market about, you know, two decades earlier than it was popularized. The main way you can tell the difference is that they spelled grinder with a with like all of the letters intact. You know, they predicted a lot of things at Black Mesa, but they did not predict the uh, let's remove half of the letters from every word internet paradigm that we all see nowadays anyway god what the fuck was i talking about uh yeah so in in an immersive sim and in games with that kind of design intentions behind it you get um you get very you get clear iconography but you also get an understanding as you play through the game that everything you can interact with everything you think you should be able to interact with in a logical way probably will let you do so and when you play more um, mechanical shooters like this, or, you know, well, not like this, but like the games that came after, you instead get more of an idea that um, you can't really interact with anything, you know? If you play a modern Call of Duty, you can't even open doors. You have to wait for NPCs to open doors for you. And so those games teach you helplessness as you play through them. They genuinely actually give you a degree of learned helplessness as a player, you, if you play a game for six hours and then you come across a door that expects you to press E to open it and you've never done that before, it just does not occur to you to do it. Which can be extremely infuriating, but it's interesting that um, Half-Life is kind of mechanically rigorous enough that it still has those elements where, you know, the only time you ever need to do a thing is in this one room and we've never told you to do that in the past, so it doesn't necessarily occur to you that you should do it. Except in Half-Life it works. And I think it's because it is genuinely this first step towards that more solid design, uh, that more solid set of design principles to create these more solidly interactable spaces. And as one of the first games to make those kind of steps, uh, I just think it's remarkable. That's... Uh, let's see if we can... Are they on our side for once? Strange how you make strange allies in times of turmoil. Army guys make for strange bedfellows. As do giant tentacle beasts. But it's curious that this um, sense of verisimilitude in the environment does not extend to uh, <laughs> the actual behaviour of yourself as Gordon Freeman. You're just as expected to stand in front of things and tank bullets as you might be in a Doom or any other of these. <gasps> laser pipes! Oh, it's been a while since we saw laser pipes. Not a lot of people know, know this, but you can actually apply fluid dynamics to um, coherent beams of light. It works very well sometimes. Also, if you're watching and you don't already, why not give me a quick follow or go check out my YouTube channel or both? Uh, I say, hopefully, knowing full well that almost everybody watching already does or is or has. <gasps> Ooh! Radioactive boxes, my favourite kind. This feels like some kind of a puzzle. Alright, that's a laser. Half-Life has a ton of lasers. Look, see? Lasers. Or do you mean this? I think this is actually a kind of a railgun. 
I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called the Tau Cannon. Let's see. Do not exp do not obstruct laser shield. Well, gee, you know what I super want to do now? I kind of want to obstruct the laser shield. I don't know about you, but there's nothing quite like getting told not to obstruct a laser shield that makes me want to obstruct the hell out of some laser shields. But yeah, so I don't know if this is supposed to be a, like a coherent directed energy weapon or if it's more of a kind of a... I think it's supposed to be kind of a railgun though. I believe it is the Tau Cannon, which is the first energy weapon in the game, and later we are going to get the Gluon Gun, which is also an energy weapon, and has an even sillier name. Because, I don't know about you, but if I hear about the Gluon Gun, I feel like I should be able to just stick it to things. Are we not getting enough laser? Do we need more laser? Can I smash these? No. See, this is one of the puzzles in this game that I actually remember, and I need to burst a hole in that wall with this big laser thingy. Okay, so there's only one laser coming in here. Is it on a timer, maybe? Or do I have to figure out which lasers go here and the others don't? Oh, Jesus, I just missed this room. The fun thing about this gun is it actually charges up. If you hold down the button, you get this nice rapid fire effect. And I think it does ricochet damage as well, because it ricochets. But if you hold it down, you get these delightful charged shots. Oh, it's a handheld particle accelerator. Fascinating. I mean, ultimately any kind of particle beam weapon in science fiction is a handheld particle accelerator. So it is a silly idea, but it's not exactly an un, uh, unfounded silly idea that's never been mentioned before in, in science fiction. Which this is, apparently. If you don't know how to make this stuff work, it can be really confusing on your first run through the game. I know that I got stuck here for a while the first time I played this before just remembering how to do it on subsequent games. But, you know, you experiment, you hit this, the laser shield comes down, it blasts a laser, and then it says do not obstruct, and there's a big box, it's, you know, reasonably sensible. Ooh, yeah, some kind of uh, sanctioned wall hack does sound like an, an interesting way to change a meta. As I've mentioned before, although I've played first-person shooters my whole life, um, I never really- oh, fuck. Well, as I, as I was saying, I've played first-person shooters my whole, li whole life, but I never really fuck. Um, anyway, I never, I never really got into multiplayers because I never really had internet access as a kid. And when I did, it wasn't fast enough, and we didn't have a PC strong enough for proper actual games that worked that way. And plus I had severe social anxiety. Hi! Oh, there's two of you. Oh, there's another guy. What? Would you mind telling me why Peters thought it was a good idea to switch it on? Like, I understand the physical logic of what happened, but why did he think that was a smart option to begin with? I've been saying this all of the way through the game, but I love that these scientists are clearly enormous eggheads with zero actual common sense. It's such a common trope, but I feel like Gordon is not just the only sane man uh, in terms of like the terrible, awful, evil ethics that have been happening in this place, but also in the sense that he's the only person who's smart enough not to, for example, switch on the, you know, Eviscerator 5000 that we keep here. If the purpose of this thing is to heal people, why did it do this? If its purpose is to do this, why did he switch it on? Please, I have to know. I certainly hope you know what you're doing. Lead the way. All right, so... Oh, interesting. That is actually really, really interesting. I didn't know that uh, that kind of speedrun tech translated into FPS combat uh, multiplayer. Does that mean he's going to come with me or not? Oh, there we go. Anyway, as we were talking about last stream, um, you know, obviously I personally prefer to... Can we just... Oh, okay. It was down to me. I thought they needed to open the door. Um... 
as we were talking about in previous streams, I personally prefer to um, stack my party with um, with FPS class Barneys, which are which are very effective. And people don't realize this, but they actually have a lot of synergy. Guys, come the fuck on! Have I been that much of a burden? No, you're just Let's not moving. Go. Come on, come on. There we go. You, yeah, you're probably stuck. Actually, let's go. So long. I'll make a memorial in your honor since you're stuck in about a foot deep of a thing that you can't climb out of, apparently. But yeah, so one of the advantages to um, stacking the scientist class is that they actually provide all these buffs. And um, if you can get them to stand in the right positions, their overlapping buffs will buff each other and you get this exponential buff increase, which is really useful in some of the tougher boss fights. But uh, it can be a bit fiddly and technical to pull off, and I prefer to just go with the simple DPS buffs that you get from having... A small army of, of shoot men. It's completely under military control. You'll have to sneak and fight your way from one end to the other. And I don't expect you'll meet many of our peers along the way. But if you do survive and somehow make it across the base, you'll end up at the Lambda complex, where the rest of the science team has taken shelter. I wouldn't venture there myself. But I will let them know that you are coming. Uh, excuse me? Why is he okay, bye. Anyway, uh not to be terrible, but <laughs> Lambda Complex. I find it quite simple. This is the most over-engineered uh, rotating door I've ever Fuck. Well. Uh, you know, they just really don't have any, um... They don't have any, like, resiliency training for fucking hell. For these soldiers anymore, you know. One surprise and they go all to pieces. Can I hit these with a... I've got one of them. I've only got a few of these left though. Can I hit that one without it hitting me? The answer? Not really. I should probably stop wasting these. Anyway, I don't know he, he, why he said that I had to, you know, fight and sneak my way through as if that's not what I've been doing literally all day. You know, you turn up for work late one time and suddenly you have to murder about 56 people. On the other hand, that is more evidence to my uh, Gordon was going to go postal today anyway theory. Well, you see, the Gordon Freeman thing is that um, he's not wasting the grenades normally. He's using them for their intended purpose, which is to destroy people. Not always the people I intended to destroy, mind you, but some of them. Anyway, this is Surface Tension, which is a fun chapter, full of explosions that I don't want to deal with. Do I have any satchel charges left? <gasps> no, but I've got one of these. If I put this on the ground, just... I think there's guys waiting to ambush me. See, there's one. Is there another one? Is there another guy? There's no way in hell this could possibly backfire on me. Oh, I can't believe that I managed to get that. So, uh, shit, I can't get back through the door. Fuck. Oh, god damn it. Oh, I guess I did figure out a way in which this can backfire on me. Okay, that's that's okay. If I do this right, I should be all right. If I do this, if I do this perfectly, I should be able to make this. Okay, okay. Steady breaths, Gordon. One, two, three, and go. Can't believe that worked. <laughs> Ow. Like I said, they just go all to pieces at the drop of a grenade. Um, well, I'm surprised. That, okay, I can get back through. There is a button, it's just in a less convenient place. So, if I remember correctly, one of the main important things about this chapter is remembering to not stand near the things that explode, of which there are a great deal and you need to be careful of them. Or do this, which is also an option. How often do, how often do bits come back down? How high do they go? Is there anybody else who wants a hot fistful of death? Or indeed, the coward's option of the crossbow. Oh, I know- I remember what the fuck- yeah, I remember what happens now. Oh, 
Well, I didn't live long. Yeah, it's like someone put a firecracker right underneath it. So there's definitely there's an evil helicopter in this area, and I and I specify that it's an evil helicopter because um, you can ascribe intent to helicopters reasonably effectively. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that that turret exploded the bridge, but it looks like it was actually something else. Did I hit him? Looks like I did eventually. It looks like that soldier explodes the bridge on his way across. Is that coming my way? Ow, fuck. Alright, time to just tank bullets to the face like some kind of extremely brave, tough fellow. Can I die already? Please, please be dead soon. Am I even hitting it? Do I even need to kill this thing? I can just leave. You don't have to take a fight, you don't want to. You can just go. This is true in real life as well as in video games, but it's also more important in video games when you're more likely to be in these situations to learn de-escalation and so on. Aha! I'm sure that won't have any long-lasting ramifications for the ecology in this area. I don't know about you, but fucking with, with dams can cause some serious problems. On the other hand, this guy, wherever he's gone, it's probably going to cause more problems for the ecology of the area in the long run anyway. He's certainly causing problems for the ecology of Gordon Freeman personally. Oh, I guess I have to kill that so that I don't get killed by him. Ow. Ow. Well, that definitely didn't work. I wonder how to kill that thing. The last one only took three crossbows, and I've hit this one with way more than that. Ow. Ow. Would you mind leaving me the fuck alone? Thank you. Does this work underwater? It's... nope. It really should, because it's got shells, like... Like the 9mm. There's not really any... Ah, now you're dead. Sucks to be you, huh? How swiftly, how swiftly we attain the same situations as those we, as those we denigrate. I could just try and ignore it. That might work. I could also quick save after the healing, which might also be helpful. I love the, I love the boing noise that the crossbow makes. It's really satisfying. Aha! I think, I think I dealt with it. I think I dealt with it without dying terribly this time. Which is really all we want in life, is to deal with our problems without being brutally destroyed by large underwater creatures that are supposedly from the Marianas Trench, but absolutely are not from Earth. Oh fuck, I'm drowning. What, that- uh, Wait, hang on. How am I supposed to get through here? If those things are- I'm gonna- I think I'm gonna drown now. I think I'm gonna die. Don't mind me. So if this if this is on a timer, I guess I have to kill that thing and then come back up here. Which is less convenient for me, personally. Alright, that's one hit. Three three hits took it out last time. I think I missed. Yep, I definitely missed. Okay, right, now that it's dead, I should be able to go switch this thing back off. Then come back down and then do the other thing. Honestly, there's so much make work here. Working for Black Mesa must be the most tedious job in the world. Like, on the one hand, yeah, you get to be at the absolute cutting edge of interdimensional science and research. On the other hand, this place was built by the lowest common denominator, and it's extremely frustrating to work with. And, you know, sometimes you get shot at by helicopters. I'm just assuming that this is actually an everyday occurrence. Otherwise, why would the HEV suit have these, uh, like, bullet control systems built in? Since it does reload your gun for you. Much like how Master Chief's uh, heavy armor suit in the Halo games will jerk him off quietly in the background. Which is a meme and not actually true. Although the history of that meme does kind of fascinate me. Ooh, Sandy. Oh, it's nice here. I like this. I don't like those. I suppose I don't have to worry about hunting licenses for creatures from another world. They're, by definition, an invasive species wherever they are. 
unless they're back on their home world, in which case they're not an invasive species, they're indigenous, and that's fine. But yeah, the, the history of that meme is kind of fascinating to me. As far as I know, it basically comes from an intentional misinterpretation of some, some information in one of the novels, which someone then edited to read something else. Uh, because canonically, given that they were in basically inspired by the Warhammer Space Marines, the uh, Spartans in, in the Halo games basically have no sex drive. They are uh, part of the child soldier modifications that they uh, have inflicted upon them. Oh, leave, me, leave me alone. Oh hey, actually if I remember correctly, a fully charged shot from the Tau Cannon will just fucking kill a helicopter. And it's going to be a waste if I have to yowzers. Well, I mean, I don't know about the helicopter, but a fully charged shot from this thing nearly just killed me. But yeah, so they have no... Um, they have no sex drive whatsoever. Someone edited the text of one of the novels to talk about how the how the uh, the suit takes care of it, which was of course interpreted to mean that the suit jacks him off. Well, it looked like that hurt. I don't know about finishing it off, but and it's coming back this way. Wait, are you sure? Oh no, the space wolves spe space wolves specifically are allowed to fuck, I think. Some aspect of their um of their particular modification process allows it, but space marines in general do not fuck. They're all sterile. Is that in range? I can't even tell. Oh well that answers that question. Imagine how embarrassing it would have been to have just shot down a helicopter with, like, man-portable weaponry, which is... I think we can all agree what horrible internet people would call a Chad move. But, um... Then just to get killed by a blink dog that creeps up behind you and bumps you off a cliff gently. Ooh, that looks like it's got useful things, but can I reach it without just absolutely beefing it and just splattering myself on the floor? That's the question. See, it's funny you should say that. Um, it's fascinating to me that you don't think Slanesh is into, you know, um, let's say, orgasm denial or chastity or any of these particularly specific sexual things, you know? Like, if I was Slanesh and I, and I turned a, a whole legion of space marines to, to chaos, specifically the flavour of chaos that's obsessed with sensation, don't you think that being eternally horny and unable to fuck is just kind of like a fantastic power generator for uh, evil wizard bullshit. <laughs> evil wizard bullshit. Let's see if I can hop across here. Aha! Oh, this is where I was already. Okay. Well, let's try and avoid dying this time. Or by dying, I mean falling pointlessly off of a wall and taking half my hit points with it for no reason. Still, this is the most efficient way to use these resources. If you intentionally harm yourself, then you can use the extra health pack here. Uh, if you don't harm yourself, it goes to waste because you're you're just gonna leave. Like. Also, it's kind of interesting that like I don't really understand what Gordon's motivation is at this point. Your motivation for the first part of the game is escape this terrible facility. Then you get up to the surface, and on the surface, everybody's trying to kill you, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, the only way to stop this." Bad incident. That looks suspicious as hell. Ow, fuck. The only way to stop this bad incident is to find some way of uh, putting this thing in orbit, so why don't you go do that? And then you go do that, and you put the thing in orbit, and then after you put the thing in orbit, they're like, okay, cool, you can go now. And then you try to go, and then some other guy's like, by the way, you should go to the Lambda com Complex. I don't know what's in the Lambda Complex, and I don't know why you should go there, and I don't really know what the point of it is, but... Did that make a noise that this thing can hear? I wonder if a fully charged lambda shot will kill this guy. I mean, it killed a helicopter. Oh, fuck, I'm stuck. Ow. These are remarkably immobile plants. Oh, I'm stuck inside him now. <laughs> you know, not to have more terrible phrases in this episode. <clears throat> But 
Yeah, so for anyone who's just joined us, we were talking about um, Warhammer 40,000, which is a different game. In fact, it's not even one that you play on a computer. Unless you play any of the many PC adaptations of Warhammer 40,000, of which there are a shit ton. Yeah, I know, see? It would have been very on point to the discussion we were having if the tentacle monster quietly got stuck inside me, or even noisily and messily and sloppily got stuck inside me, because as we all know... Well, actually, maybe I'm the only person here with a tentacle... Nah, no, okay, tentacles are a very common fetish. I'm sure there's people watching who are into it. And there's also, almost certainly, people who are into tentacles, which is a very specific fetish. You know... Not nine, not eleven, it has to be, be tickled ten times exact. Ow, fuck. I should just have a gun out at all times. I should stop playing with my weird toy. Which is an uncomfortable phrase to have just said, given what we were just talking about. But, I think... Ow, leave me alone. I can't get away from these things. And I wonder if this, I wonder if, like, desert territory is, is like their natural habitat on their home world. Because they do seem to swirl around under the... Okay, but you understand that when I said this was a family-friendly stream, that was a joke. And also, I can't I can't stop it. I can't I can't not be filthy all of the goddamn time. It's infuriating, as you know, as my flatmate. So this says it's a minefield. I don't know about you, but I am reluctant... ...to cross a minefield. Even if it is full of jumping things that might explode the mines for me if I let them. On the other hand... On the other hand... Gotta get across it sometime, somehow. I hear explosion men. I hear I hear shooty guys. I hear... I hear blasty boys. You know, those boys who can't stop blasting. Um, which is again oddly on point for this discussion. Everything I say is going to sound oddly horny now. It's inescapable. Well, that felt vaguely satisfying. There's nothing more pleasing when you're playing an FPS than just ostentatiously headshotting people. Maybe I should stop trying to be in cover and hide, and I should just continue blasting in faces. Oh god damn it! <laughs> Everything I say is going to sound horny now. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, let's try and get those to explode from a distance. Can I even see them from over here? And uh, no, I can't. Well, I could waste one of my grenades, or I could waste one of my grenades. Looks like that's my only option if I want to destroy those. Well, see, I was not when I started streaming today. I was not expecting the most important question of the stream to be: Does Gordon nut on people's faces? And uh, no reaction, no reaction from the audience here in the studio today. Fascinating, because normally, normally that would provoke some kind of a response in some kind of a way. But let's get back to what we were doing and forget about whatever horrible, filthy things we're talking about. By which I mean, let's dive back into the minefield, and that's definitely not where this is. We're just crawling through narrow, narrow spaces, crawling through uncomfortably dry holes today. Right, mines. I'm going to assume that if I just stick to the edges of this arena, I'm not going to get exploded horribly by a landmine. I don't know why they've put landmines in this area to begin with. Are they worried a bit? Ow. Well, that was one of them. Like, are they worried about people sneaking into this facility in the middle of the desert, which is full of armed guards and also aliens? <laughs> Because one of the interesting things about the area we just passed through is that we started to learn. There, we started to see a lot of hints that actually, maybe, this is not all some kind of terrible mistake right now. Well, well, I mean, that was a terrible mistake. But we are starting to see that possibly... Hey, what happens if I just, like... I can't believe that worked.
You know, I've been collecting this 9mm ammunition all day. It's nice to finally find a use for it. I should have just thought of that at the start, you know. Occam's light submachine gun. And I should be able to hop over here. Ow. I think I was supposed to hit the ladder. <laughs> But yeah, so we start to see those apparatuses, which are clearly set up to experiment on these weird aliens, which are already in tubes. Which does therefore imply that they've been teleporting stuff over for a while, and the accident today was only that the teleports became uncontrolled. Which is probably why that chapter is called Unethical Experiment. Was that, was that an F-16? Fucking hell. Ow! Dicks! Let's see if I can hit that guy before he executes me. Ow, ow, ow. That's not a that's not a guy. That's not a guy at all. That's kind of the opposite of a guy. As we all know, a guy is a featherless biped, and that, as you can see, has three legs. And also feathers. Well, it's not surprised that I died there. Which is not a human sentence, quite. I don't know if I, maybe I can hit it with this if I aim more carefully. That's how you do it. That's the way the game is played. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Looks like three ordinary shots from the tower cannon will kill a soldier, which is good to know. Uh, it's advice that you can use both in this video game and in real life. Do I have... Oh, I have squigs. I can... Nope, they're not squigs. That's Warhammer again. I have squonks. Um, I have I have wiggly gyms. I think that's what we decided to call them. Let's have a little wiggly gym party down there. Where the, does that not... Did they just disappear? Eventually they'll kill him. Or at least distract him long enough for me to kill him. Jimmy knock him down? So that doesn't sound like something I would say. I think you're putting words in my mouth. Is there a, I could really use a, a health pack. Also, is this the Grand is this actually the Grand Canyon? Like is there any landscape in America that actually looks like this? This is extremely out. Exaggerated based on my understanding of like does like Montana look like this or something? Well, who dares really wins. Okay, we're back up on here and I have to try again. There's probably an easier and safer option to deal with that turret, but I don't know what it is. You know what? Fuck it, this works. Don't knock it if it works. Let's see if I can headshot this one. I also like that Gordon has just entered this stage of like a complete and utter apathy to the sanctity of human life. You're just encouraged to be like, ooh, I bet I can like baseball bat a grenade over there and hit that guy with it. Gordon's kind of performing for his own his own audience. He's just no, my sons, my precious boys. <laughs> that didn't work at all. I've just thrown them into the void pointlessly. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. What about if I do that? Also off the edge. Terrible, terrible. I'm not making this mistake again. Tragic. Absolutely sad. Nice to continue the theme of blasting people's faces. Is there anything over here? Nope, let's not fall off. I do I do remember feeling like this this area had a really interesting physical depth to it when I played it 15 years ago. Playing it now, I'm kind of astonished by how how obvious of a photo backdrop that this is. This almost looks like an episode of Star Trek where you can see that they have a, a very clearly painted map backdrop instead of a, any kind of actual physical depth to the environment. Now, if I remember correctly, there's a man over here who needs a grenade. I'm glad I was able to help you. Let's see if there's another guy that we need to kill. Oh, no, okay. Is this just... How did these guys... How did they get here? This is another one of these, like, fridge logic -y situations that you get when you start thinking about this game as... Oh, 
oh wow, I managed to ricochet the bits of that guy all the way around this inner circle and split them off over there. This is what I'm saying, that Gordon's just kind of... dead. Gordon's just kind of um, lost all semblance of, of human feeling at this point. He's kind of just going, oh my god, watch this one. Oh my god, I bet I can bounce a grenade off that guy's forehead. It probably is a safer way to do this, but I don't know what it is, and neither do you. Actually, you might, depending on who you are watching this, but you never know. Can I hit the guy in the foot? I bet I can. Wow, he went to bits! I hope he wasn't using that foot for anything important, or indeed any of the rest of him. In that case, I might just explode this guy too, because it's kind of- oh, he's not there. So I'm actually not sure how to get through this bit. I don't know how to get down that pipe without dropping off of a thing, but yeah, so if I'm having this much trouble and I'm from here, what are these guys? Like, what's up with these guys? How do they get into this stupid situation? Oh, dip. It's a real kickback on that one, huh? Note to self, weapons with a kick like a goddamn mule are not the ideal weapons to be using when climbing the world's most frustrating rock face. It's an important lesson, and it's one we all must learn at some point in our lives. But um, not perhaps one I want to learn right now while I'm trying to do this, specifically. You know, this whole section would be a lot easier if I had more hit points. I wonder how many Tau Cannon shots it takes to smash one of the turrets, actually. Alright, got that one. I could try snipe- no, I mean I, I have a sniper weapon, I should use a sniper weapon. I don't want it to feel, you know, let down. There's nothing quite like feeling like you're an important part of someone's, uh, someone's methodology and then they just kind of stop met using you and you're like, oh, I thought I thought I was special, I thought I mattered, I thought I was an important component of your survival, Gordon. I thought you needed to use me to, to kill people from very far away by shooting large shards of metal into their heads without any, any, any warning or any, any loud gunfire noises to warn them. And then they're just like, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll malfunction a little bit next time you need to use me. And you're like, well, please please don't, actually. I would like to not die. And they're like, well, maybe you should have thought of that before you started hanging out with Mrs. MP4. And I know it's an MP5. I'm forgetful. So there must be a way to get down here without dying horribly. But as far as I know, this is a very slippy surface. So let's have a little, a little old savey-savey. And then... Let's try and not do an amazing radical kickflip down into hell, okay. Oh, that works. Turns out I was overthinking it, as I usually do. Ow. The pressure these guys put on to make you move around really is detrimental to not dying. <laughs> up, up. I wonder how heavy the HEV suit is. It's never ex really been examined or explained in any way but it does kind of feel like the HEV suit must weigh a whole bunch I know that I think the the armor in Halo weigh, weighs something like 800 kilograms <clears throat> maybe more even so how heavy is the HEV suit it's it's large plates of alloy mounted on a, a kind of a heavy rubberized under under layer I see Yeah, no, um, something like... Ooh. Well. Bye. The difficulty is getting that guy. Uh, you know, I can see why people hate this chapter. It's one of the famously hated chapters of this game. I probably should have picked a more impactful weapon, but whatever. This is... <clears throat> so like I hate to do like bad worksman blames the tools, but like this is bad design. This is that this is what the this is what bad design looks like. You may not like it, but this is what peak bad design looks like. Um This pipe is shaped in such a way that you can't really land on it safely, uh unless you are incredibly careful. And you are constantly shot by people that you can't really shoot back at unless you're very careful. It's just an extremely difficult time all around. You know, this is already Gordon's hardest day of his life. I think we should be a little bit more sympathetic to Gordon Freeman, 
inveterate murderer of random dudes. Alright. Speaking of murdering random dudes without vets? What the hell does inveterate even mean? I mean, I know what it means, but it's like, what is it? Come on, ah! Well, hey, that guy didn't go all to pieces. Good for him. Oh, I don't like that. It's another one of them damn helicopters. Did it explode itself? Did the helicopter dead? Ow. Okay, well that's worth knowing. If you overcharge this too long, it will hurt you as much as it hurts anybody else. Or indeed, instead of anybody else. You must respect the Tau Cannon. You must understand the Tau Cannon. Once drawn, the Tau Cannon must see blood before it can be sheathed again. Whether it's yours or someone else's, the Tau Cannon cares not. Is this the way you're supposed to go? Or am I missing some... Did I miss... Oh, fuck. Uh... So this is the... This is the, the... I thought I was going the secret way. I thought that what I would find over here is some kind of a secret item. And that going the other way was, um... Uh, going the other way was the non-critical route, or the critical route, or something, I don't know. Oh yes, yeah, straight up there's just a door with some rocket launchers. Well, I guess that explains how these guys got onto all of these ledges. Which is worth knowing, if nothing else. What do I have that goes boom but isn't rockets? Aha! Wow. What the hell are these made of? Or possibly, what the hell is my crowbar made of? Because uh, that was a... <laughs> that was a mismatch of um, effective damage and physical response, if ever I have seen one. In fact, I should do a quick save so that I don't die again. I mean, yeah, if nothing else... Um, not to be like, okay, you know that drill tweet that's like, under I take it back under no circumstances do you gotta hand it to the Taliban? Like, I mean, yeah, it was pretty effective to just hide your shit in random caves. Oh, fuck. I say knowing very little about that uh, period of recent history. Due to being generally... Okay, so I don't mention this a lot, but I... In 2019, I had a bim like a bimbo phase. And immediately tailing off of that bimbo phase, I have I have what I could only describe as a girl himbo phase. Um, so instead of learning important things, I kind of just forgot everything. All right, I'm gonna equip the shotgun in this pipe for you know because I hate my eardrums. Like I haven't popped them enough today, says Gordon Freeman. Ironically, after that phase, I then caught COVID and have since been bedbound. Well, no, I was bedbound for a while and then I was around for a while and then I caught COVID again and I've basically been unable to do fucking anything and I really miss working out, you guys. I miss working out so fucking much. Um, but because of that... Fuck. What's this guy made of? He does not care for the buckshot. Ow. Oh hey, yeah, th th <laughs> this is literally, this is literally the, the bimbo to girl himbo pipeline. And I am now going to sneak through it. Ineffectually. Let's see if I can headshot some guys from cover. That's always a nice effective tactic if you can make it work for you. Or can I just continue to sneak? Traditionally sneaking through water is supposed to be a lot less effective than sneaking. Because you go sploosh, sploosh, splosh, sploosh, sploosh, splosh. But apparently Gorgon... <laughs> Gorgon Freeman. He turns everybody to stone. Through the use of, um... Particle physics. I think I'm going to die. Don't mind me, I'm just, I'm just gonna die now. I bet if I sneak through here, I can just sneak through the whole section and not have to deal with any of these assholes. Also, it's been a little while since I said it, so if you're watching and you haven't already, why not give me a follow? I always incredibly massively appreciate it. And also, massively appreciate anyone who checks out my cool YouTube channel where I make cool videos. Where I do in-depth, well-researched Let's Plays. I'm currently working on a Let's Play of Mist, The original Mist, 
by which I mean Miss Masterpiece Edition, the re-release from 2000. Oh, fuck, they rumbled me. Now, how did that... Like, the last time I shot one of these guys, it was a point blank and it took four hits to kill him. Why did that take just two at this range? Let's see if we can spot some other fellow who needs in need of a little bit of explosions. Or maybe we'll just run for it, like... Or maybe we'll explode ourselves, I don't know. But yeah, so this is this is one of those rare for Valve badly designed areas. This whole chapter is pretty badly designed in my book. It's There's a difference between satisfying difficulty and frustrating difficulty, and um, this whole sequence absolutely lands on the side of frustrating difficulty. There's loads of guys who will kill you very quickly, and they will do so from positions where you can't really fight back. On top of which, there's just a lot of like tricky jumps and irritating semi puzzly sections. I don't have a lot more grenades. This is my last grenade. And I mean, it turned that guy into a thin paste, but. How far can that ta turret traverse? Nope, I do not want to be using that right now. On the other hand, maybe I should be using rockets a lot more, considering there's a stack of a bunch of spare rockets here and I do not appear to have shot anyone with them yet. Also, a really nice touch is that this actually has a um, compressed air launch system. I've never been as interested in uh, explosive munitions delivery systems as I am in actual firearms, so I don't know how common those are as, like, real weapons. Um, I do know that something like an RPG-7 definitely just has a rocket on it that fires, that moves the grenade around. But the rocket launcher in this seems to use uh, an airburst launch system that, that has compressed air, blasting it into mid-air before it then flies onto its actual target. Yeah, like, this guy's unstoppable, you know? Like, there are very few individual on foot humans who can just kill a tank by themselves without really worrying about it too much. And Gordon Freeman is both of them. What does this do? Oh, it opens a door. Who, who could have predicted such a thing? Is that it? Was that- these guys were really tough. Is that just- they're just here? They're just gone? Let's crawl through this little spider hole. What, I, what really amuses me about this is that when you pop out behind this tank, it does try and turn to face you, and then the uh, the positioning of the turret means that it can't traverse far enough. It just goes bonk into this and gets stuck. So that you can then quietly throw bombs at it. It would be much more fun if you could crank open the hatch on the roof and um, toss some kind of incendiary device inside. As you are allowed to do in other seminal video games, such as the Mercenaries series. Which, by the way, low-key is one of my favourite games of all time. Um, nobody ever thinks- pff, that's gonna kill me. Nobody ever thinks about mercenaries ever, ever anymore, have you ever thought about that? The game was an absolute classic and no one ever- No one ever talks about it, no one ever plays it. I would do a let's play where they not all about 20 hours longer than I normally do let's plays. Also, as far as I can tell, you can't get Mercenaries 2 anymore, I don't know what happened to it. I had it on Xbox 360 and I've never seen it for sale on uh, on PC. I do... Uh, I do... I do miss the vents. You know, like Gordon's having a tough day, all he really wants at this point is to have a nice vent sash. Is this a secret area with secret... Yeah, it's a secret area with secret grenades. Little do they know, I can do that too. It's been so long since I murdered someone with a pineapple. Wow, okay, I'm terrible at this. Have I hit any of them yet? <laughs> I'm just gonna use all of these. I'm just gonna completely waste them. And by them, I mean the grenades, not the guys. Why can I hear fire? Oh, it's that thing. That's that tank I exploded with several people still inside and alive, presumably. 
I don't know how many people you get on a modern tank crew. It's like four or five, I think. So, you know, just a lot, just a whole lot of toasty corpses today. Just a whole lot of guys quietly turning into bacon in the sun. Yeah, it, that is true, but also my favourite thing about the way that frag grenades panic soldiers is that their own grenades will panic them half the time. <laughs> As we saw with the amazing absolute genius in, when we climbed inside some vents a few streams ago, who promptly threw a grenade in after me, then ran in after the grenade he'd thrown, and then turned around and then exploded in a vent. This was an unexpected event eventuality. For him, at any rate. Which was a really bad pun. Wow, I'm not on good form today with the puns. Oh hi! Thank you for this. Thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Whoever that was, I can't actually see because my stupid stream manager doesn't tell me. This is inter interestingly another one of these points that I've mentioned a few times, where the like semiotics of the game break down. One of the things that, that Half Life teaches you over the course of playing Half Life is that to open doors, you generally need to. Oh, the reason why Gordon is killing people instead of aliens is that. Um, all of your scientist friends were like, don't worry, the- wait, shit, is this- can I go through, please? That's weird. Do I have to go back through the load zone to make it open? Apparently I do. Uh, yeah, so a bunch of the scientists were like, don't worry, the army's coming to save us from all of these horrible aliens. And then the army shows up and, um, is like- and all of the army guys are like, wow, boy, boy, howdy, I cannot wait to kill some scientists. How about, how about you, Dave? Oh, me? Oh, I love killing scientists. It's my favourite thing in the world, which is a really funny conversation to overhear while you're sneaking through a vent as a scientist. Um, and so, presumably, presumably the army has been keeping tabs on the extra-dimensional research that's been taking place in this area, and have been like, hmm, actually, maybe that sucks, and have sent a bunch of soldiers to kill everybody. I think there's a sniper in there. On the grounds that if we kill everybody, maybe this problem will go away, which is honestly the solution that the United States military has for everything. You know, if we can just murder enough civilians, eventually, eventually they will stop being terrorists, they say, winking at the camera. Because, you know, that's what you come to my streams for, the incisive political commentary. Can I get across here? This is more land... I mean, you know, we had a tactic that worked against landmines earlier. Why not just try that again? I've certainly got plenty of spare bullets. I don't know why they don't do this in real life. It seems like a very effective minesweeping tactic. But why? Well, as I said, the answer to but why is because. It's possibly... It's possibly an inference you could make that... The management of Black Mesa is completely amoral, and um, now that this terrible stuff has started happening, they just want to deal with it in the easiest way possible, and if they kill all the scientists, then no one can ever blow the whistle. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha Suck on that landmine! I've defeated your landmine puzzle. And for once, I didn't immediately step back into the thing and explode myself. Can I get over this one as well? Ah, yeah! I'm good at this now. And, on top of everything else, I've spotted... Oh, dip. Okay. I have spotted... A sniper nest, which if I can just aim this correctly... Is that bouncing off the cloth? There we go. I did not kill him. Okay, well that's stupid. I'm just going to switch to the rocket launcher, except I've run out of rockets for the rocket launcher as well. This is terrible. This is the worst day I've ever had with grenades, says Gordon Freeman, who's been having an absolute blast with them. Wink. There we go. Oh yeah, no, absolutely the implication is that he left that guy to bleed out to bait me into walking in front of him. That's literally... That is what is happening here. Like, war crimes are go-go, baby. Which also would... Might well be the stream title for when I upload this on YouTube. Let me just take care of these in case I have to run back through here in a hurry. It's always a good idea to dispose of these things, even if you're not intending to use them, which is one of the reasons why uh, many, many war-torn places in the world are struggling nowadays, because, you know, people just la place a lot of landmines and then leave, and it's a huge humanitarian problem in the world. 
You know, they really ought to have a bit more of a scatter pattern for these, because I'm not having trouble finding them. Ow! Ow! What the shitting fuck? Asshole. Alright, let's see if we can get a nice nice little throw up in through his- Ow! Fuck you, buddy! I looked like it went into the right place. Ow! Shit, no it didn't. Can I even hurt him? See, I was thinking... I was thinking Warcry a go- uh, Warcry's a go-go sounded more like a... Uh, more like a, uh, a Bayonetta cutscene line. Can I... Well, that nearly worked, except I dropped a second one on top of my face. Nope, didn't get him. Yeet! Fuck, I did it again. God damn it. Can I pick these back up, actually? Oh, you should be allowed to, but oh well. Bayonetta can do a few war crimes, except that none of her crimes are war crimes because she's not... Actually, hang on. Is she kind of... She's kind of a member of the, the witch military, actually, now that I think about it. So I guess I guess Bayonetta can do some war crimes if she wants. This isn't going to do jack shit. Nope. Hmm. What can I do about that guy? This must be some way. I don't have any more explosives. I, these... The... Rifle grenades are the easiest and most effective ones to use in these situations. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. She's she's a member of. Uh, she's a member of like the the witch organization, and she's waging a one woman war on heaven. So I guess it's definitely true. Also, I missed a couple couple points, but yep, definitely worth mentioning. Gamers on weed. That gamers against weed. That's the opposite of gamers on weed. Is kind of aha, got him. Uh, the opposite of what you your deal is, I guess. But yeah, no, the American military. It sucks super bad. Just absolutely the worst bunch of guys imaginable. Also cringy as hell, kind of. Do you remember that time when they tried to get like Twitch a Twitch stream going or something like that and people just bullied them off the platform, which is delightful? There's got to be a way up here. Can I crouch jump? Nope. Aha! Yes, I can. Gordon Freeman, athletic genius. I bet I can smash that open. Or this. Maybe not. There's definitely a way into this building, though. Because this is like a whole little secret side area that you don't have to go to, but... Well, maybe you do, I don't really remember. But if you can get inside here, there's definitely something valuable. Like, you know when you're playing, ah, there's a hole in the roof. You know when you're playing a video game and you're like, oh, if I can crack that open, there's going to be something valuable in it. Ah. That's, an, that's an alarming noise. I, I, is that why they call them alarms? Oh, I'm learning so much today. I was heading there myself until I wound up here and, well, simply lost my nerve. Take one look through that door and you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to wait out the catastrophe in here. If you intend to go on, then I beg of you, proceed with extreme caution. Well, freedom of speech protects you from the government, not from the people, so they are technically the government. Kind of by definition. Also, I was in no way listening to what that man said. I have no idea what he told me. Something vague about the Lambda complex. Oh, I bet if I threw that over I could knock it through the thing. If I stand in here, is that guy going to be okay if I explode this? I bet he'll be fine. Oh, what the... I'm now remembering that I think one of the other things he tells you is that uh, if you explode any of the landmines in this building, they all explode. So... It... Oops, I guess. Now if I do... <gasps> Okay, interesting. So I guess it's only the me that makes these things explode, not the box. There might be a few explosions today. You know, it's been a while since we since we exploded goddamn everything all of the fucking time, like some kind of dynamite saint. Are these just rooms with boxes in, or is there something else up here? Does that 
box have a landmine on it? That's that's sneaky. That's tricksy. That's not allowed. I bet if I move the box, it explodes. The irony of him saying, be careful immediately before I just fucking detonate everything in my own face. I should probably not be speedrunning through this hallway. I'm sure these boxes won't be important. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. Are we cool? Are we friendly? Are you a nice grenade? Yeah, boy. <laughs> I actually do find something really adorable about the landmines in this. I don't know what it is, but whenever I, ha whenever you're holding them like this, the way they look up at your face, it looks like the face of an adorable robot from some kind of 1980s movie about a robot that's a military robot that comes to life. And that's actually a real movie now that I think about it. I'm just, I'm just quoting, uh, I'm not quoting, that's not the word. I'm referencing, I'm referencing something. So I mentioned this previously, but one of my strange brain defects is that I just forget nouns periodically. Um, I, let's blame some kind of brain damage for that, but I don't know what sort. I think I needed that box. That would have let me get through this window, which may be helpful, perhaps. But yeah, so I can remember that the name of the robot in the 1980s movie about the military robot that comes to life is Johnny Five, but I can't for the life of me remember anything else. Please, please stop moving. Please, for God's sake, don't break a, a beam. I swear to God, that exact sequence of notes is, in, is on the soundtrack from uh, Half-Life, not Half-Life, from Quake 2. That exact little sound sting that we just heard just now, I'm sure it's on the... Oh, don't you dare move. Sure it's on that soundtrack. Also, fun but weird little thing. This guy is here, right? It's literally a smoking corpse. So what killed him? Because if he set off one of these explosives, the entire building should have come down. That's what the scientists said. That's what we've established will happen. So who, who killed this guy? Aperture trip mines that have the same voices would actually be delightful. Like, 100%, that needs to be in, um... That needs to be in Portal 3. I love the idea of just going like, Please don't touch me. Come over here, why don't you fondle me? I promise I won't explode if you fondle me. And then naturally you do, out of curiosity, because you're a video gamer and that's what you do. Um, I need to get in there somehow. Can I sneak under this one? Bet I can. Yeah! <laughs> Highly compressible, that's what they say about Gordon Freeman. Aperture... Aperture trip mines that just turn around to look at you when you get too close. This is, this is the most tense I have been playing this game so far. I'm gonna be real with you. Oh, okay. How does that help me in any way whatsoever? There's a lift, but I don't, what's the benefit of that for me? Oh, maybe I could jump into the center from there, but oh, I'm bound to break these. Uh, can I help on this? Ugh, that was close, that was so close, that was so close. Oh my goodness. Can I move this? Actually, if I move this, will it explode or are we good? Might be too heavy. Yeah, I think that's too heavy. Okay. Well, I guess I understand the benefit of the lift now. Uh, excuse me? I should definitely stream more shooters. I wonder if the um, Time Splitters series is available on, on PC at all. Oh, like a glove. How perfect was that? Because I love those games and they're very peculiar. Although now that I think about it, they do have some uncomfortable stereotypes from time to time. Do not stack. Okay. I think somebody's been breaking the rules here, guys. <laughs> sure as hell ain't me, but I am pretty sure these boxes aren't supposed to be on top of each other. So it's naturally my responsibility to make sure that they all get smashed. Ooh, more radiation bullets. I should probably try and get into emulation because there's a lot of um, classic PlayStation games that I absolutely loved as a kid, but which I obviously cannot stream or let's play on PC. On the other hand, 
Uh, a friend of mine actually does have a capture card, and I do have my old PlayStation 2, and ooh! Is this just a guy's arm? This is the- this is the B arm that those guys were shooting me with. <laughs> Shit. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing reactions from that guy. Ah, ah, hi. Ah. Well... Interesting. Okay, so I guess this has regenerating ammunition, but it also- it doesn't do very much damage. And it can do indirect fire. Sort of. But you know what? I have the squamps. I have- I have Jimmy knock em overs Oh, are they coming after me? Fuck. Who killed him? Daddy doesn't want to be bitten right now, thank you. Daddy has more important things to care about than whether or not you're getting fed enough. Oh, I am foisted on my own alien petard, apparently. Oh, do they explode after a while? What curious creatures. Let's see what else we can find today. Oh, it's a truck. Can I just leave? Can I just fire it up and- oh, the keys aren't in the ignition. Fuck. Oh, I knew I should have learned to hotwire vehicles. I feel like- shit. That was close. My one remaining bullet should solve this problem. The 44 Magnum. It solves every problem you might end up having in your life. I can- I, I'm starting to understand why Americans love these things so goddamn much. Well, now something tells me I'm about to get shot by about 40 people the minute I step out of here, so let's equip old Trustworthy, the Magnum, and see who's going to cause problems. Is that an alien dropship? I guess so. What do I have that will cause some real problems? Oh, okay. Am I out of rockets? Oh, uh, that's a problem for me. Considering I may need them to kill a tank. It's a three. Of course, it's a three fifty-seven Python. The game calls it a Magnum, though, doesn't it? See, how do you remember this stuff? I think firearms are really. I, I mean, I'm morally opposed to the existence of firearms in the world for ouch reasons. Well, see, the thing about fitting guys inside it is that, like, we know teleportation exists. Maybe it just teleports them in. You know? Please give me explosives. I need. I need things that go boom. Dr. Blamo needs more things that will make his name be apt. Do I have anything that can kill a tank? Can this thing cannot kill a tank if I land it correctly? I always forget about the kickback. Not sure if it exploded or not. That's definitely gonna- yeah. Save the last couple. All right, uh, time for what Gooden's good at, which is sprinting directly. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Oh, okay. Fair enough. But I'm pretty sure the game calls it a Magnum is the reason why I called it a Magnum. Just because they just because they model a gun on a real gun doesn't necessarily mean it is that real gun, you know. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, well, okay, this time the plan is just going to be to sprint first. Sprint first, ask questions later. If I just leave, if I just leave, maybe these guys will sort each other out. Okay, so once again, the trick is don't stop running. Just go, just go. Hurry, hurry, super scurry. Call out the troops now in a hurry. This is what they're fighting for. This is it, boys. This is war. And other quotes from... Everybody's favourite, uh, German pop band. Translated awkwardly into English. That's... Mm, that's me, Dad. What do I have that can just wipe those guys out? Oh, this'll do it. They sure do a shit ton of damage, huh? I'm actually 
not sure what to do about this. I'm not sure how to get through here without dying terribly every single time. If I start sprinting the second I spawn in, I can maybe get across before they start... before the tank shows up. Or the F-16 that I now realise is what's doing all of the explosions. Running, 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 running. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Here we go. Round the corner, round this corner, in here. Shoot the guy. Switch the gun. Shoot the guy. Miss the guy. Shoot the other guy. Did I make it? Did I survive this time? I made it through in one piece. Remarkable. Oh, they switched it for a Desert Eagle. Huh, that's not surprising. I, I believe we had a long conversation in a previous stream about how the Desert Eagle was a dickhead's gun, which it is, but it is also kind of cool. Which is what makes it a dickhead's gun. All hipsters know that people using something too much is what makes it shitty. And that is no less true for that sort of thing. Now, if I try and lob a grenade in through there, that guy's absolutely gonna... Ow. Do that. Blood loss detected. Damn, no shit. For real? <laughs> oh, hey, there's a Barney. And an angle on there, but I can't actually hit him with anything because I don't have any direct fire explosives. <sighs> The trials and tribulations of being Gordon Freeman, freelance man destroyer. Let's get the hell out of here. Sure, yeah, let's get the hell out of here. How about you open this box for me? You know, this convenient door marked storage. You have a bad feeling. Is is there something dangerous in there? This look this is the opposite of a bad feeling. This is great. This is what I've been looking for all day. Ah, <gasps> rockets, yes. The eternal, endless, clicky noise of delicious ammunition to shove in all of my gun orifices. And other horrible phrases that you re immediately regret me saying, but which I gleefully will continue to do. Just quietly continue jacking off my shotgun. Getting some nice tension in my explosion delivery device. Oh, is this a... <laughs> that's a cute that's a cute detail again we see these uh, we see these um the origins of these little immersive simmy moments the fact that you can switch the lights on and off even though you completely don't need to did i get him i think i got him i didn't need to kill that guy but did i really need to kill any of the guys i've killed yes the answer is yes all, all deaths are necessary in this game everybody i've murdered it, it wasn't a murder it was a completely justified combat scenario. Doors are all locked. I can't get up there. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go in the only linear way. Anyway, so it is delightful to me that this, the game that marked the pinpoint turning situation, which is a weird way to phrase that, between ordinary games and the immersive, uh, ordinary FPSs and the immersive sim, it's the joy in the details. There's no reason to have working light switches, except that it feels like they should work. And that's really what it boils down to. Things that feel like you should be able to do them, you know? I wonder what happens if you break these and can't get out. Oh, wait, hang on, there's no way out of here anyway. Delightful. So I'm not entirely sure where to go now. Are you going to come with me or what? You absolutely not are not going to live longer if we work together. I don't know how to tell you this, but... Oh, of course, the tank. Use rocket on tank to solve puzzle. Use bullet on guy to solve guy. Blood loss detected. Yeah, no shit. What the hell? Yeah, hey, I saved your life. My trophy room. Aren't you? Wow, really? That's fucked up. <laughs> I've been freely doing murders all day and I have no remorse whatsoever, but I'm not taking trophies. Sh should I be taking trophies? Is that a thing? I'll bet that stings a bit. 
Is that even killable? I don't... Maybe I should just try and sprint... Oh, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Barney, Jesus Christ, what... Are you just gonna... Okay. Well, I've wasted all of my rockets and achieved nothing. See, this is again this um, semiotic problem with games. What it has taught me so far is that tanks will explode if you shoot them with rockets just a couple times. So this time I see a tank and I need to explode it, so I shoot it with rockets. And I'm like, oh, it's got more hit points than the other tanks. So I use all of my rockets and I have not killed it. Which is kind of unfair to me, if you think about it. Ah! Oh, you're joking. That's not, that's not, that's not the answer. That's not the solution. That sucks. That's also not the solution. Okay, so it does die, it does die eventually. It just takes a hell of a lot of punishment. Hup. Whoopsie daisy. Well, I yeeted myself to death unintentionally, but you know what? It happens. Right, okay then. I'm not entirely sure where to go from here since the wall behind that thing was locked off. I've got some rockets. Okay, why not? Hey B, why don't you come with me? Okay, well I'm gonna heal up. I'm gonna try and explode that thing one more time. But yeah, so the semiotic problem with games that I've mentioned so many times, where they teach you one thing and then it's not true later. I, I've i seen the broken ladder, but I, I don't know how to reach it. I feel like I can hear something, but yeah, no, if I, if I, I can't reach it from here, so. Oh, hang on. Ah, uh, I figured it out now. Thanks for the hint, buddy. You're always there for me in my times of crisis. Which is another FPS that I would quite like to... Uh, play through it sometime, at some point. Since I do now finally have a rig that can run it, and have done so for several years. I've actually played it a bunch of times, it's a really fun game. Barney, you beautiful motherfucker. <laughs> Got another one. Nice job. Why don't you go stand next to that tank, huh? Okay, so from here we should be able to jump onto here, and from here we should be able to jump to here and get up to here. And then daintily pirouette atop this ladder like some kind of, uh, you know, 800 kilogram ballerina with extremely heavy arms. And by heavy arms I mean in terms of weapons, not in terms of actual limbs, although you never know. Just Gordon lift? Let's see. There's bound to be guys around here as well. Can I hop? Now, I feel like I should have uh, exploded that. I do miss the days of... Um, every time a new crisis came out, it became the new benchmark for... FPS graphics. And would, of course... Nice. I hope you enjoyed that delicious pineapple dinner, my good friend. And no, I'm not getting tired of using World War II terminology for explosives. For some reason it just it just jumps off the end of my tongue. I don't really know why. Let's see, do I have something that will kill people a bit faster? Just in case there's another guy, because there's always another guy. Yeah, I love the mental image of um grizzled 90s FPS protagonist. Uh, bench pressing. Bench pressing some kind of rocket launcher. Alright, hold still, buddy. I Would you like a haircut? Because I'm pretty sure I can cut your hair from here with this. Now just hold very still. Oh, not again. It keeps on happening. Oh, shit. Ouch. <laughs> that keeps on happening, too. How about that twitch shot, though? How about that, How about that clutch headshot? I'm sure I'm not about to- oh, hey, Barney. I'm sure I'm not about to die again horribly, though. So 
so the real trick here is to not fall off the goddamn roof like a moron. Surprisingly difficult. Um, not a lot of players manage it, I say facetiously and completely untruly. Which isn't, which is not a word, but I don't really care right now. Where did he go? <gasps> Flanking tactics. They're learning. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you know, it never occurred to me that you're. But you're completely right. This is this is a tranquilizer thing. I'm just putting. That guy's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, Dave, James, are you okay? But he's not okay. He's in several pieces and several more pieces elsewhere. So I have a self-imposed two-hour limit on most of my streams, both because I don't want to overdo my voice and also because. I, uh, did this, this, was this just a loop? This just went in a circle? This is back where we started. That doesn't help. Am I missing something obvious? So, as soon as I find the, ah, uh, is it through there? I bet that's what it is. So as soon as we get into the next, like, room, I think that, that will be it for today. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think we jump down here. Ow. And I can hop to here, and then over here, and success! So, looks like something dangerous is going to happen over there. So that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming on this ridiculous explosive odyssey. Drop me a follow if you haven't already. Check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thanks to all of my Patreons. I love you all, and I love everybody watching this. And why don't we all come back on Friday for the next stream? Because these are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm UK time, regular. There might not be one on Friday because I'm going to have be seeing the dentist on Thursday, but on the other hand, I'm supposed to get a root canal and this is just a preliminary thing, so Friday's probably fine. So I guess that's, that's more of my life than you guys need to hear. So I will catch you sometime later. Thank you so much for watching.